Hello there, my name is Retro, the first time you see in my channel, I used to review cartoon series, anime series, or something, computer random. Today we're going to talk, uh, talk about the top 5 most interesting side characters of Villainous, Volume 3. Of course, you have other volumes if you want to see on my playlist, but at the same time, you don't need to see them to enjoy this video. But other than that, there is one condition that some of the characters or side characters don't much have a backstory or at least a name or something, but to make them fascinating is because they sort of help build the world in understanding who they are and how they work in this universe. Now, let's get started of the first character. Now, we gotta follow Anal Noir. This character is based on a sort of myth of the Mexican Indian or the Aztecas that basically are kind of, I want to say witch doctors, but they're not witch doctors. They're basically shaman. Shaman who are connected to the animal space, they actually allow to transform to that animal. But they're so sort of infamous because some of them will abuse their magical abilities to harm others because they can. Once more, that sort of depends who acts of Mexico because usually they have a bad rap. Some of them are evil, some of them are good. Depends who they are and why they use their abilities. That's what it makes so interesting if they use a Nanual as a villain from Villainous Show because this creature is more kind of magical but at the same time, I love this sort of alien interpretation of him being sort of scientific. That you could tell he's very intelligent, use science and magic, or mother nature in this case, to use to his advantage. But let add more something interesting of a manual, there actually are three different types. The first type, they actually can transform whatever animal spirit they actually have. Or multiple animal spirit depends on the shaman. The second type, they actually can actually teleport themselves as fire, lightning, or water, or whatever element they actually got given. The third type is basically they can actually use animals as their guide or possess the animal so they can see what they see so can use them however it fits to them. And you can see why this type of creature is super interesting of villainous that you don't know is it evil or good or actually they chose this animal just to represent and understand what type of world this really is. Our next character called Matarios. He's basically a villain because he sort of got made because he got blackmailed by Black Hat. So this is the reason he became a villain. But interestingly enough, his design was inspired by the Minotaur of the Roman myth. So half man, half animal. But interesting, Martaro is actually more machine than actually human on an animal. He sort of give himself up to more machine parts to actually increase his strength. But you have to describe him, he actually is intelligent. There is images, he actually studying sort of plans to take down his main hero. But once again, just a little bit of information we know about this character. But at the same time, the little information we have make him endearing because everything he's doing is because his family is trying to protect him from Black Cat. But of course, he's not stupid. He's actually very intelligent. It's just sort of the animal type he chose makes him sort of threatened and maybe uncompetent. But once more, that's just a trick from heroes so he can get near him and take him down as the most smartest tactical way ever. Especially think of him as Vane from Batman. Now, next character we talk about Omega Nuclear. Now, this hero is basically the Superman of this universe. He's basically super strong, super fast, he also endearing. But to make him sort of interesting is basically he was super controlled by Miss Heat. And his special ability is nuclear. He can actually absorb nuclear blast and also give it out. Now, I found him fascinating is because he's so stuck to Miss Heat because the first time you see it is with Miss Heat, he being controlled without well, knowing. But interestingly enough, fans do notice that nuclear never smiles. The reason why he never smiles is because he's trying to be defined of the control of Miss Heat. Whoever, who, whoever Miss Heat controls is always happy over giving praise to Miss Heat, but Nuclear never does. He's always unhappy, almost defining her for every inch of his own body just to make a point that you are not full control of me. Once again, little bit of information says a lot about a character. Now, every time you have a yin, you'll have a yang. Now let's talk about Nuclear's villain. 
Coyote, the villain of Nucleo. Coyote is sort of the opposite. He's the rebel, gothic, evil sort of vampire who actually absorbs Nucleus because he needs to survive it. But once again, we don't know have enough information why he needs nuclear power. But once again, people sort of assume that he actually needs it to survive. This is the reason he has to break the rules to get nuclear breaking office or building who has nuclear power. So that's what makes him a very interesting villain. He is the rebel, but at the same time, he is the yin of yang of Omega. Of course, I thought this sort of interesting that he has the same problem as Omega. Coyote is sort of controlled by Mesid. Probably not intentionally, he probably was there in the wrong place and the wrong time. And that's that's why he became sort of the servant of Mesid. Of course, that makes Mesid twice as strong. You have two more strongest characters in Villainous. So, yeah, making this sort of kind of interesting while talking about Mesid. Now, let's go to a final character called Dr. Raptor. Now, it's sort of obvious why they cut her Dr. Raptor is because she's half human, half Raptor. The reason why, honestly, nobody knows, but I have to put it in my own hand cannon that I think she used a teleporting fusing with a dinosaur, and this is why she came up as half human, half Raptor. At least that's my uh, hand cannon. I don't know about yours. What do you think? Why she became half human, half Raptor? But besides that, she's sort of infamous known as the one who actually taught phenomena or the scientific knowledge. He also the one who had help her to get her job to accidentally becoming the Fondorma you know now. Yeah, everybody thinks she's the one who basically manipulated her and becoming the sort of anti-hero Fondorma. But once again, that sort of theory is nothing really confirmed. But I find it fascinating that she's sort of just interesting looking. In fact, you can easily understand who she is and why she's doing this. Of course, it's super obvious how much she cares about her students, specifically Phenomena, because she always there in giving her advice or scientific advice whenever she actually needs it. Of course, the find it fascinating that you never hear her talk or actually get in in the show. The only time you see her is basically the photos of Phenomena. But once again, the little images, moments you see her, says a lot. But all of that, that's all we know. Now, I got nothing else to say, just one question. You feel all the characters are interesting or not? Tell me down below, let me know. I got nothing else to say, just thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.